Hey, thanks for clicking on my video. I admittedly don't know what to talk about, but I always find myself clicking on rambling videos because most people generally tell stories, and it's really interesting to hear things from other people's perspectives, and occasionally the stories even make me laugh, and that always makes it feel good because I generally don't feel good. I mean, I'm sure you feel the same, but anyways, I guess I should probably get home with telling you a story now. It's what everyone else does. Okay. Once upon a time, in a far, far away land, there lived three princesses. Wait, no, that sounds like Cursed Princess Club. Um, once upon a time, in a far, far away island, on, on, on a far, far away island, sorry, there lived eight princesses. Now that's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs if they all change gender except for Snow White. Hmm. Well, alright, I guess I don't have a story to tell you. I guess I can just ramble. Making ASMR videos is not as easy as it sounds. And it's not as easy as a lot of people think. A lot of people think you just put your mouth close to the microphone and whisper a story. Or, you know, make noises if you're that kind of ASM artist. But it's not as easy as just whispering into a microphone. You also have to know what you're going to say. And if you don't have any experience in storytelling or improv, it might be harder to make things up on the spot. So then you'd have to make a script before you can even do anything. And trust me, it takes a long time to write a script. I have actually never written a script before, but that's just me. I have never scripted any of my ASMR videos before. I'm serious on that. Everything I do is just made up on the spot. The only thing I do is I might pause if I get stuck on something and then resume the recording afterwards. But I've never written a script. Because I have, ever since I was a kid really, practiced writing stories. I mean, sorry. Well, actually, yes, writing. Yes, also that. But when I was a kid, a little, little kid, like fourth grade, I would always take my mom's phone and I would record my stories in it. I'd make little stories about my cats being superheroes and supervillains and saving the day and whatnot. But I'd record it all on the spot using the voice recording app on my mom's phone. But it had a five minute limit. So I would frequently make two parters or three parters in terms of stories. That was the most fun thing from my childhood. I know it sounds silly. Most kids played outside with their friends. Or, you know, watched TV or played video games in their childhood. And, of course, I did do those things too. But what made me the most interested was telling the little stories through a voice recording app with a five minute limit on my mom's phone. Now, granted that wasn't a very good phone, the microphone quality wasn't that great, and it did have a five minute limit, and aside from that it had terrible, terrible storage capacity, and I would frequently have to delete my old stories. And then, partway through fourth grade, my mom accidentally dropped her phone in the toilet, and it never worked again. So, you know, I lost all my fourth grade stories. They're all gone. I'll never get them back. And, of course, with her new phone, it didn't have that five minute limit. And I tried recording stories on her new phone, but it just didn't work. It didn't feel the same to me. I don't know. I That might sound crazy. But I just couldn't make the stories on my mom's new phone. It just didn't feel right to me. Only the other phone felt right. And I don't know what it is. 
I still, to this day, don't know what it is. But I just didn't. I couldn't. It didn't feel right making them on the new phone. I know that sounds crazy, but it's how I felt. I still kind of do. I don't think I could make something like that now. But my point is, for a long, long time, I have practiced that sort of thing. (laughs) I'm not very good at making up answers to things on the spot, and I am terrible at coming up with math answers on the spot, but I can improv a whole story on the spot, generally. Of course, there are times that I can't. There are times where I get stuck because, again, I'm not perfect, I'm not a trained professional, and really, nobody's perfect. But I've done it a lot as a kid, and I've done it quite a few times growing up. There was a time where I made little animated story times. I mean, they were garbage, and I deleted them all, but they were all unscripted. There are times where um, I go to record um, tutorials and stuff where I screen record my screen and show people how to do things. And obviously, that's not scripted. You can't script a tutorial. What if something goes wrong? There's nothing in the script for that. So obviously I had to make that up on the spot and things like that. So I've had a lot of practice in uh, improvising on the spot in terms of storytelling. Um... Yeah, that's why I've never scripted any of my ASMR videos. I'm sorry for ramb- I'm not sorry for rambling, actually. I am not sorry for rambling. You literally signed up for this when you clicked on this video and stayed to this point. I'm sorry, though. I probably shouldn't have said something so personal. Well, a lot happened in fourth grade. And a lot of the things that happened in fourth grade changed my life forever and shaped my life to be what it is today. Maybe I'll talk about that in another rambling video. Maybe you can go to sleep listening to another story from my life. But yeah, fourth grade was an amazing year for me. For a bunch of ways. I can't even begin to describe it. It really helped shape my personality today. I know that sounds dumb and maybe a little crazy, that an elementary school year would really shape my life that much, but it did. It did. And if you're not an American, or you don't understand what I'm talking about, fourth grade is basically that year where you're, hold on, let me think. Um, Fifth grade is 10, 11. Where you're 9 and 10, all right? Where you're 9 and 10. Generally, I mean, people do stay back, and people do skip ahead. I've never met anyone who skipped ahead, actually, but I'm sure a lot of people have. I've heard about it, but um, that's the year where you're generally 9 to 10 years old. That's that year. I don't know what that is in other countries. I would guess either year 4 or year 5. I'm not sure. I don't fully understand um, other countries. Um, I believe that would be primary school, though. I'm not sure. I'm sorry. I don't really... I know. I I know. I should really try and learn more about other countries, but... uh, Let's just say I... Okay, so, um, I'm pretty sure you all figured this out by now, but I am an American. I live in the United States. Um... But I'm awful at U.S. history. (laughs) Awful. Like, there is no way I could pass um, those tests that they make you take if you're going to move to the United States. There's no way I could pass those. And I know a lot of Americans couldn't pass that either. I don't know why they have that. I mean, logically, they should have a test that's more logical, really. Like, um... Do you understand American traffic laws? Can you speak at least enough English to get by? You know, the more practical things, not like... I don't know exactly what they ask, but they ask weird things about U.S. history. Who cares? You know how many people don't know about their own country's history? Ask if you know how the traffic laws and basic laws 
and stuff like that work. Okay? Ask if they can speak enough English to get back. They don't have to be fluent. They just have to understand enough to understand if there's danger and how to, you know, have a usual conversation. Like, if they know that they're being, uh, what's it called, um, mischarged or something. Like, when you're like, when it's like, this is a 1999, and, you know, you give them a $20 bill, and, like, you know, it's like, um, like, they don't give you a penny or something. I don't know, I should have used a better example, actually. Um, like, when it's, like, $25, and you don't have a 20 and a 5, so you give them a 20 and a 10, or a 20 and a 20, and, you know, they don't give you exact change, they miss a quarter, or miss a nickel, or something, and you know that it's wrong, but, what do you ask? Oh, sorry. Um, what are you gonna say? I mean, really? I don't know. All I'm saying is that they should learn the basics of living in America, because that's what they're gonna do. Live in America. They shouldn't have to know U.S. history. I mean, yeah, it would help to know the basics. You know, like, when is Independence Day? Fourth of July. Boom. But, you know, they don't need to know all that other nonsense. I probably don't even know most of it. And I know that my, uh, family doesn't. Grandmas and grandpas and all the people who have been around for a long time to know it probably don't. And that's just how it is. I mean, it's pretty funny when you think about it. People who weren't born in the United States probably know more about the United States than people who live in the United States. Pretty funny, huh? Alright, well... I hope you're feeling more tired. Maybe I made you laugh. Maybe I made you cry, I don't know. <laughs> I hope I made you feel something. Preferably tired, then that means I did my job right. Literal job. I'm getting paid for this. Um, how much money am I making so far? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes, I'm on the clock for this. Uh, I'm gonna punch out now. Bye-bye. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm sorry. I, I was trying to be funny. Well, anyways, I really should let you go now. Good night.